What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Words of Wisdom. Still here in the book of Job. Job chapter 20. And before I even get started with this, we all know that the election just happened and the votes are still being counted. And uh, we don't know yet. From what I've seen, Joe Biden is leading. And I'm not into politics at all. You know, I believe the presidents are selected rather than elected. And uh, the reason for me bringing this up is from my understanding of Scripture. From my understanding of the prophecies. Trump will be in power when everything goes down. He will be in power when... The tribulation begins when the resurrection and rapture happens. Now, so that means three things. Either he's going to win, or he's going to lose and the time is very short for us. The next month or two, until everything goes down. Or he's going to stay in office longer than he's supposed to. Based on uh, who knows what's going to happen in the next couple months. Because people think everything's going to go back to normal. Stuff isn't going to go back to normal. Not at all. There is no new normal. Well, the new normal is a new world order. But that won't be in place until after he comes on the clouds. And there's a major rebuilding process. See, they're trying to bring order out of chaos. To bring in this NWO, which is the beast kingdom from Revelation in Daniel chapter 7. But what they're going to bring it out of isn't the chaos that they're creating. What they're going to bring it out of is the beginning of the day of the Lord. When the seven seal scroll is open, the first couple trumpets blown. Jesus comes on the clouds. This country's wiped out. Israel's attacked in Gog Magog. Ezekiel 38 and 39. Then they will bring order out of the chaos. But from my understanding of Bible prophecy, I believe Trump is a major player in prophecy. I don't think he's the Antichrist, but I believe he's a major player in Bible prophecy and that he will be in power when it all goes down. So I just wanted to start it with that because we're in this time. And something else I'll mention real quick. Hopefully I can get this video to you guys. I uh, you know I um I recently joined some new groups on Facebook. I share this on in different groups on Facebook. But uh hopefully I can get this out to you guys because I got blocked uh blocked again from sharing on Facebook. If anybody follows along with me, then you know that uh, I was banned for a week right after I put put out my music a, a week or two ago. My music, uh, Christian rap, Jesus, Jesus is Coming. My latest project, I was uh, banned from sharing in groups on Facebook that I don't manage for a week when I try to push my next Bible study after putting that music out the next day so uh, I was sharing my Bible study tonight the Psalm Bible study and uh, Psalm 62 and uh, about halfway through sharing I was blocked again um, I'm not blocked from sharing in groups but they said um, 
the features disabled for for the for the moment because they don't want spam to happen. So you know, it's, it's just another way of blocking me um, subtly, acting like they have a reason to be blocking me. But you know, I've shared in as many groups uh, that I'm joined to the last two to three days and didn't have an issue until tonight. And then they, I'm about halfway through sharing and they blocked me. So it is what it is. We can't expect any less. We're living in the last days and uh, the word of God is going to be censored. So with that little intro, here we are in Job chapter 20. <clears throat> And this is re the response to Job from his his uh, friend Zophar, Zophar the Namathite. Because Job, we know Job's claiming his innocence. And, and like I've been speaking about, a lot of this, uh, there's so much wisdom in the book of Job. And this is why it's considered one of the books of wisdom. Um, so much wisdom in here, but also so many prophecies of the end times. See, the book of Psalms and the book of Job, Psalm and Job, uh, contain not only stuff that David and Job were going through, but prophecies about believers here in these last days. And... Some of us, or some of them apply to us personally, and some don't. But they're all different prophecies about what different believers are going through here in these last days. But here we go with, uh, with Job 20, the response of Zophar. Then Zophar the Namathite responded, Therefore, my disquieting thoughts made me respond, make me respond. Even because of the inward agitation, I listen to the reprimand which insults me, and the spirit of my understanding makes me answer. So he was insulted by the stuff that Job was saying. And let me just, you know what, let me just pull up the previous chapter to get a look at. What exactly Job was saying. He, well, Job was basically saying his friends are dishonoring him and and not being there for him and and that they're that they're wrong because because he was truly innocent. So I listened to the reprimand which insults me. And the spirit of my understanding makes me answer. And uh, I don't have the interlinear pulled up to see if uh, it's supposed to it's supposed to say the spirit of my understanding or just the spirit of understanding. But the spirit of understanding, we see that in Isaiah chapter eleven. And. In Isaiah chapter 11, at the beginning of the, of the chapter, we get the seven spirits of God. Because, and the seven spirits of God are that there's the fullness of the Holy Spirit. So, different things that are... Um, that believers have through the Holy Spirit. Certain uh, attrib attributes of the Spirit. So we read in Isaiah 11, verse 2. The Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of Yahuwah, will rest upon him. So that's one, the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of wisdom, two. And understanding, three. And that's what I'm referencing right now in Job uh, 20. The Spirit of counsel, four. And strength, five. The spirit of knowledge, six, and the fear of the Lord, seven.
And the spirit of my understanding or the spirit of understanding makes me answer. Do you know this from ancient times? From the establishment of mankind on earth? That the rejoicing of the wicked is short and the joy of the godless is momentary? And this is what we've been seeing throughout the Psalms. He's actually speaking this to Job. But again, this is a wisdom for us. This is understanding for us that we learn in other scriptures as well. So he's referring to Job with this, which he's uh, again calling Job wicked, saying you had to have done wickedly for all this stuff to come upon you. But we know that wasn't the case in Job's situation. And, but like I said, we've been seeing this all through the Psalms that uh, the joy and rejoicing of the wicked is short, it's momentary. And that's the ten days, basically, and ultimately the three and a half years. But we see the ten days, the end time captivity of believers in a lot of a lot of the Psalms. Do you know this from ancient times? From the establishment of mankind on earth, that the rejoicing of the wicked is short? And the joy of the godless momentary? Though his arrogance reaches the heavens, and his head touches the clouds, he perishes, perishes forever like his refuse. And that's the lake of fire, permanent death of both body and soul. He perishes forever like his refuse, like a trash. Those who have seen him will say, where is he? He flies away like a dream, and they cannot find him. Like a vision of the night, he is chased away. The eye which saw him sees him no longer, and his place no longer beholds him. And again, this is referring to the wicked. His sons favor the poor, and this is, uh, I believe this is a wrong translation. Uh, we read in... The ESV reads, His children will seek the favor of the poor, and his hands will get back his wealth. Meaning he's, the wicked is going to lose his wealth, and even his children are going to seek the favor of the poor. His sons seek the favor of the poor, and his hands give back his wealth. His bones are full of his youthful strength, but it lies down with him in the dust. Though evil tastes sweet in his mouth, and he hides it under his tongue. Though he desires it, and will not let it go, the evil, but holds it in his mouth. Yet his food is changed, and yet his food in his stomach is changed to the venom of cobras within him. So, let me just continue. He swallows riches, but will vomit them up. God will expel them from his belly. He sucks the poison of cobras. The viper's tongue kills him. He does not look at the streams, the rivers flowing with honey and curds. And this is, um, I believe this is describing the kingdom of God. Um, land flowing with milk and honey. He does not look at the streams, the rivers flowing with honey and curds. He returns the products of his labor and cannot swallow it. So he can't even taste 
can't even uh, enjoy what he has, what he's earned, because he's wicked or acting wickedly. He returns the product of his labor and cannot swallow it. As to the riches of his trading, he cannot even enjoy them. For he has oppressed and neglected the poor. He has seized a house which he has not built. Because he knew no quiet within him, he does not refrain anything he desires. And I actually have that pulled up in another translation. The, C, uh, the CSB says, because his appetite is never satisfied, he does not let anything he desires escape. So, he takes everything he wants because his appetite is never satisfied. Nothing remains for him to devour. Therefore, his prosperity does not endure. In the fullness of his excess, he will be cramped. The hand of everyone who suffers will come against him. And this is what's going to happen to the U.S. The U.S. is greedy. Our stomachs are full. And the hand of everyone who suffers will come against us. Not against us personally, but against this rich nation. Nation. When he fills his belly, God will send his fierce anger on him. And rain it on him while he is eating. He may flee from the iron weapon. But the bronze bow will pierce him. And iron, that's what we see in Daniel chapter 7. That's the beast kingdom. The fourth beast kingdom. But bronze represents the third beast kingdom which is uh, the Western world, Greece, Rome, Britain, and the modern-day fulfillment, America. He may flee from the iron weapon, but the bronze bow will pierce him. And we also read about in one of the Psalms, uh, David said in one of the Psalms, Psalm 144, maybe, um... Basically mentions God gives me the strength to bend a bow of iron. It is drawn and comes out his back. Even a flashing point from his gallbladder. Terrors come upon him. Complete darkness is held in reserve for his treasures. And the unfanned fire will devour him. It will consume the survivor in his tent. The heavens will reveal his guilt, and the earth will rise up against him. And that takes us back to Deuteronomy chapter 30. We read, starting in verse 19, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today, that I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So choose life. In order that you may live, you and your descendants, by loving Yahuwah your God, by obeying His voice and holding fast to Him. This is your life and the length of your days, that you may live in the land which Yahuwah swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. Hallelujah. The heavens will reveal his guilt, and the earth will rise up against him. The increase of his house will disappear. His possessions will flow away on the day of his anger. This is a wicked person's portion from God. 
the inheritance decreed to him by God. See, God evens everything out in the end. And the, the righteous, the those who are persecuted for the name of Jesus, those are, who are persecuted for being godly, are going to be blessed. But the wicked, we see what's going to happen to the wicked. And this should, this is why it's wisdom, because that should put the fear of the Lord in us. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And we need to fear what will happen to us if we act wickedly. God is the judge. And he's going to judge us on everything. So let's make sure we're right with him. Let's make sure we're serving him with all our hearts. Let's make sure our hearts are pure. Resist the devil. Take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Let's overcome, brothers and sisters. Pray daily that you're found worthy to escape all the things coming upon this world and to stand before him. Praise his holy name. Hallelujah. One day soon, we'll be with our king as long as we don't fall away and, um, and deny him. He who endures to the end will be saved. So let's keep the faith. Let's stay strong. Let's shine his light through our obedience, through doing his word, through spreading the gospel, through being set apart, holy to God. Let's shine his light. Let's show his love. The king is coming soon. We got to be ready. We're his representatives here. Let's uh, act like it. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, call out to him today. We're living in the last days. There's not a lot of time left. Jesus loves you. He wants to save you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that said whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. What you need to do is give your life to Jesus. Drop everything else and completely, completely give your life to Jesus. Submit your life to him. That's repent. That's the meaning of repent. So repent and believe the gospel. So the gospel, like I said, is believe. But to explain it a little bit more, God requires perfection in order to enter his kingdom, in order to live forever. None of us are perfect. We're all sinners. None of us are perfect. We're all sinners. But Jesus was perfect. He lived a perfect life. And it's only through faith in Him that we can be saved. God, Like I said, God requires perfection. So we can't earn it on our own. We can't earn our way to heaven. We can't earn our way to eternal life. The punishment for sin is death. That's permanent death of both body and soul. God is judge and... That's his judgment. That's his punishment for sin. But through Jesus, through faith in him, because it's not by works. It can't be. So through faith in Jesus, we receive his perfection. We receive his righteousness. Have our sins wiped away and receive eternal life. Are able to dwell with God in his kingdom forever. So give your life to Jesus Christ today. We're living in the last days. There's not a lot of time left. We'll see how it goes with this uh, election and who gets elected. But if it's not Trump, then our time is definitely short. I mean, it's short either way, but if it's not him, it's definitely short. So give your life to Jesus today while you have a chance. That's the end of Job 20. Thank you guys for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.